is a dollar 36 one dollar us buys a dollar 36 canadian and uh it's plastic money and the rumor is it smells like maple syrup oh yeah it smells just like maple syrup okay this is the pigeon river crossing for ontario and uh the joke here is uh on the american side of the border there's a lot of dairy farms and when the wind's blowing the right way into Canada, you can smell America's dairy air. Welcome to Canada. Pot's legal here. This is uh, definitely out there. I've been driving in this dirt road for about 45 minutes. Uh, this is a side road off the main dirt road. And uh, I'm out there. This is about as remote a place I've ever been with the trailer. It's in Ontario. It says Thunder Bay District on the uh, GPS. But I went through Thunder Bay hours ago. So it's a pretty big district. I'm using X mode on this stuff. You turn off your uh, your traction control and you turn on X mode. And that uh, again is uh, each wheel is controlled by the computer. Uh, when I go down a hill, I just take my foot off the gas and uh, it does automatic braking for me. Um, I haven't really used it to this extent before, but it seems like it's working pretty good. There's a rock here, I wanna take it easy. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it goes down the hill at about five miles an hour. Oh, look what we got here. Hold on. A little prize. Well, it's a little gift from the local resident. This is a uh, bear flop, bear poop. So this answers the question, does a bear poop in the woods? I don't know what he's been eating. Maybe blueberries? It's all black. Uh, let me taste it and see what it tastes like. Yeah, it's sweet. Blueberries. It was easily an hour and a half off-road to get here. And uh, when you look up remote in the dictionary, you're gonna find a picture of this spot because this is remote. Uh, I'm somewhere in Ontario. It says Thunder Bay District, but uh, Thunder Bay, I went through that hours ago. I guess it's a big district, but uh, I'm on a mountaintop, kind of up high, which is good. I smell water though. I don't know if it's Lake Superior or something else is here. It's a little buggy. I have a great view of the sky. Tonight is the uh, Perseid meteor shower, so I'm hoping it'll cool off. And these bugs will go away and I will just get some spectacular meteors on a moonlit on a moonless night so let's uh, see how the setup is here okay I have a uh, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere uh, me and my trailer and this is a uh, amateur radio setup I've put together and I'm gonna try and raise some stations I have a big antenna out there it's a it's a uh, horizontal Windham antenna 120 feet long I'm on battery power with the radio. Let's see what I can get. Got a nice sunrise today. It was really quiet last night. So this whole mountaintop is covered with blueberry bushes. I can see why a bear would be interested in this. I had a bunch of them this morning before I got going. And uh, they were really sweet, really good. So I'm going to uh, put this on freecampsites.net. Takes three GPS coordinates to get in here. There's a couple of turns, but it's uh, if you want uh, out there, this is it. Uh, here's another pile of bear flop that wasn't here yesterday. So this is about an eighth of a mile from where I am. So this guy is rolling around eating his blueberries. Uh, I don't begrudge him at all. I can't help but think he's leaving me a message, uh, you know, it's in the road. 
he had all this other areas to uh, to do his business. And well, now this shows some real promise. Let's see here. So this is a lake in Ontario, Canada, and uh, I got it off of uh, freecampsites.net. And uh, well, here I am. We'll see if I get to stay here overnight without being disturbed. Like this, you know, huge mountains with fjords. I mean, it was just fantastic. You know? So I'm gonna go to that town and check it out. But it was a nice quiet night last night with uh, great stars, really great stars. Uh, I, I think as I'm surrounded by trees, there was no light pollution or something. I don't know what the effect was. Or it was very clear. Maybe the Canadian fires have uh, stopped spewing smoke in this area. But the stars were great last night. I hope I get more of that. So I'm off like a prom dress to go get uh, a permit. Ontario, Route 81, in the Nipigon area. Just checking out these dirt roads, see what's down here. Maybe a good camping spot, maybe not. Well, this street was a, uh, this was a dead end. Looks like it was a, a uh, maybe a logging road. And they piled up a bunch of debris so you can't get any further. Which is okay, I guess they want to protect this area. Dead end. I gotta get back to a turnaround point. I briefly got stuck, but uh, the Subi pulled it out. <laughs> this car is amazing. It's highly maneuverable for such a big car. I can turn around in these tight spots, and it, uh, you know, you can get yourself stuck back here. I mean, I'm trying to be careful and uh, not go crazy. But I'm also trying to get back to the uh, the places I want to get to. So, uh, I don't know how you get help out here. <sighs> Looks like a good one. So I want to get the car and the trailer up here, over this, and then my challenge is when the car straightens out, the trailer's still gonna be pointing up, the rear end's gonna be towards the sky on the trailer. And again, I've got another hump over here, which uh, same issue coming up and going down. So there's only one way to know if it's going to work. Well, I'm over the hump, so to speak, and on to the uh, campsite. So I went down that trail, and uh, eh, you know, it's I could barely turn around there. Look at, look at where I am. Of course, this is why I'm coming back here. 
It was difficult getting back here. I had to unhitch the trailer here and move it by hand to turn it around. It was uh, just not cooperating as far as uh, maneuvering. But I'm in. I may do some little adjustments, but I'm in. Uh, and, uh, you know, stellar view here. It's really fantastic. I got the mountain, the cliffs off on the one side, it's open sky. It's gonna be spectacular stargazing now that the, uh, the fires have, uh, the winds are not bringing the smoke from the Canadian fires this way up here in Ontario. A little clearer air today, much better visibility. I'm finding trail markers here. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, often bear hunters uh, leave bear bait around. They want to get the bear acclimatized to coming back to a particular area. They want it to be in that area. And uh, I don't know if that's the case here. But uh, somebody's marking something. Some uh, nice wild blueberries. Let's see. Mmm. These are sweet. Well, where there are blueberries, there's a good chance there's bear, so maybe I'll have a visitor of the furry kind. Oh, this would be a great place to have dinner up on this rock here. Uh, if only I could get the trailer up here. Wow. Well, okay. So last night I was on the side of a stream and uh, just to turn off off the road uh, up here in Ontario, I'm just, uh, I'm not using any GPS coordinates. I'm just coming back here and exploring and finding areas. And uh, so far it's working out. I had to get a permit. Uh, yesterday I was thrown out of a place that was on freecampsites.net and uh, a, uh, I guess the Canadian equivalent of a ranger showed up and he let me know three or four times that I couldn't camp there. I told him all three or four times I wasn't going to camp there, even though I was planning it, you know, before he showed up. So he showed up within an hour of me getting there, so I think somebody tipped him off I was there. And uh, there was a camp nearby, a pay camp. I think they may have tipped him off, which is fine. Plenty more places to choose from. But he took all my data. It took all my data, my license plate number and all that, and I could see him keying it in. So uh, he was very nice, very nice guy, you know, informative. But if I have another encounter, I'm on the record. I'm sure they would get out the rule book in the next encounter. So he let me know I could buy a camping permit. He said at Canadian Tire Stores. I went there in Nipigon, Nipigon, and they didn't have any. Uh, they said they didn't know what I was talking about. But there was a uh, an official, um, you know, Canada provincial office nearby, I like for a driver's license and things. I went there, and they sold me the permits. Uh, I got two nights because I'm heading to head off to Quebec next, and uh, it's nine dollars Canadian a night, which is very reasonable. And what that allows you to do is to go camp anywhere out here, you know, that's Provincial Park. Uh, if it's Crown Park, and I don't know how you find that or what it's all about, then you don't need anything. You just go there and camp. But I'm in Provincial Park, and uh, I've got my permit. I'm legal now, so, uh, so if somebody comes down this trail, uh, I'm ready to show them my permit. I may change my mind, but I'm planning on staying here today and tomorrow and leaving uh, today's Wednesday, I guess leaving Friday. Friday's not a good day to leave because uh, there's a lot of other people out camping on the weekends. But uh, that's what I'm planning on doing. I'll get in some driving. I want to head towards Sault Ste. Marie. Last night it was pretty chilly and uh, it's been in the 90s this whole trip. Uh, two weeks. So uh, I had an opportunity to try out the heater. And the heater's pretty good. I'm going to do some video on the heater next. Uh, the heater's pretty good. It, uh, you know, of course it makes a little noise, but it, uh, I, I, that's part of the purpose of this trip is to get heat in the trailer. So I'll talk about that more as if you haven't heard enough. So I'm putting out 200 watts, yeah, 100 watts per panel. That's uh, five or so amps per panel. And uh, this is amp connector. It does get warm. I mean, these wires are rated to 10 amps, but it does get hot, warm. 
since I'm generating so much power, I've got power to spare. Uh, so I'm charging the uh, my tablet and my laptop. Laptop's a heavy draw. That's like four amps an hour. Charges in two hours, but I've got the spare energy now. I'm still charging the battery uh, in the trailer. They're mostly charged, and uh, I've got energy to spare. So uh, I may as well use it to charge these devices during the daytime. Whereas at night, it would be a pain in the, you know, it would use my storage energy, which I really don't want to dip into. I want to use that for the refrigerator and for the, uh, the heating system. So, uh, yeah, look at this. Now there's a good example of why Reflex it's good. Uh, the sun is coming from the west, and this is facing the west, and uh, it's uh, reflecting off some of this radiant heat. So I'm going to close it up. All I want to do is leave a little air gap so when the refrigerator is running, it lets off some of the uh, some of the some of the uh, the heat out of that cabinet. So I'll adjust these. But here it is. Camp Cosmo. Very comfortable. I may put up a, uh, a sunshade. It's kind of a bright day here, and tomorrow is supposed to be the same. So let me see if I can get a weather report. Strong. La température 16. L'humidité relative 60 pour cent. Le vent. Thunder Bay. The Environment Canada forecast issued at 11:30 a.m. Wednesday, August 15th for today and Thursday. Nipigon. That's where I am. Scriber for today. Mainly sunny. High 22. UV index 7 or high for tonight. Clear. Fog patches developing overnight. Low 10 for Thursday. Mainly sunny. Fog patches dissipating in the morning. High 23, humid X 26, UV index 7 or high. You know, I could be home watching TV. First, I'd have to buy a TV. But then I could catch up on the Kardashians instead of being out here in the middle of nowhere alone. With the cliffs behind me, the sun setting. <laughs> it was rough getting the car back here and the trailer, but uh, this is why I did it. A little homemade apple cider. Uh, doesn't get much better than this. I guess the best things in life are free. And here's to Mother Nature for providing all this. Let's keep Mother Nature safe. You know, there's a lot to be said for doing nothing. And uh, this is a great place to do nothing. And I think I'm going to stay here for a day or two and just do nothing. I'll do yoga, I'll do some exercise, but I came all the way up here. And this is not the kind of a place you want to rush through. In order to really get it in this place, you've got to kind of fit in and just move at the pace of the place. And uh, this place moves pretty slow. The only wildlife I've seen today were uh, a couple of sharp shin hawks. I saw three of them. And I've got ravens up here. The ravens keep their distance, but they're keeping an eye on me. And they call in the daytime. I tried calling to them, but they wouldn't come closer. But, uh... Um.
Hello from Nipigon, Ontario, Canada. I am uh, going around Lake Superior. I started this trip August 1st. Today's the 16th. I'm still on the road. I have no return date. I can hang out here as long as I want. Uh, before I forget, please do click thumbs up. So I bought a couple of days worth of passes and um, you can camp anywhere out here. I mean, there's just miles and miles and miles of wilderness. I'm really trying to adjust to no schedule. I just have no schedule. Next uh, up on the agenda is to go up on a big flat rock up there, which has a 360 view of this area and do some yoga and clothing is optional. That's a pay-per-view. I'm walking around this mountaintop and uh, nice little vernal pool. Great moss, it's all dried out. But there's these great uh, rock bumps. And they're just great for sitting out on and, uh, and you know, and, and relaxing. Which is what I think I'm gonna do now. The only birds I'm seeing are uh, sharp shin hawks. They're uh, forest raptors and uh, they're small or maybe the size of a robin. Uh, they're very fast and nimble. They can fly through the trees, you know, through a they can fly through a forest. And uh, I'm seeing a number of those, but uh, a couple of turkey vultures, uh, you know, the bald eagles and stuff. I saw them uh, while I was driving, but uh, I guess everybody's really well hidden here and I can't see them. I don't hear too much calling. So, uh, definitely quiet. If you've uh, never seen these, these are made by Power Packs, P O W E R P A X, I think is how it's. Uh, how it's uh, spelt. And uh, these are AA holders, organizers. To get the battery out, you just push the bottom and it uh, lets you take it out. So what I do is, uh, as a battery is used up and needs to be recharged, I turn it over, I flip it upside down. That way I can tell who's used and who needs, you know, who's fresh. Uh, I like rechargeable batteries. So I've got them for four AA's. This is eight AA's. Uh, I've got two of those. I've got a lot of batteries in this trip. This is a dozen triple A's. This is another dozen. This is four triple A's, which is perfect for when I go backpacking. Three spares for the uh, headlamp and one spare for my pocket Phoenix EO5 or EOS. Uh, they also make it for 123 batteries. I use this for uh, water purification. These are rechargeable. And uh, they make it for nine volts. They make all sorts of configuration, and they're uh, they're pretty handy. I like the way they organize things. And best of all, they're relatively cheap. You know, uh, several bucks each. So uh, I think I have I think I have an excess supply of them. So for this meal, I'm having uh, gravlax, which is salmon that is cured with salt and sugar, um, avocado, a little onion, and uh, bread. Now the gravlax. Um, it really is a great travel food. You make this at home, or you can buy it, but it's very expensive. It's a uh, Scandinavian delicacy that mariners used to use to preserve their fish. And it's not really salty when I eat it. Um, it's cured in a brine solution of salt and uh, sugar for like three or four days. Then you take it out, slice it up, and keep it cold. And the stuff keeps. Um, I have a friend who kept some that he got from us for uh, a month and it was still fresh. So uh, this is a great travel food if you have a refrigerator or ice. So a portion of this trip included the uh, stop off at Vistabule to have heat installed. And you can see here, right here, that's the thermostat and that is the, uh, the heat vent. And the heater is in this cabinet down below on the floor. I'll uh, I'll go over and, uh, and, and we'll get closer, but no, you know, functional change. Uh, Bert was able to keep the sliding doors that I have. He was originally talking about putting on swinging doors and uh, that wasn't necessary. So I got to keep these. The new models do come with, uh, with swinging doors down here. Sliders on top are still there. So let me just move a little closer. <coughs> Here's the, uh, the heat register. So you have the thermostat over here, 
And the way this works is you can turn it on and you'll just get fan. That just circulates air. It, uh, it circulates the air in the cabin. There's an, uh, uh, an intake down below. Let me open this up. There's an intake down below. Down below this cab, this, this, this uh, board, is where the heater is. So now it's on uh, fan. When I turn it to heat, I have to turn the. Yeah, I have to turn the. <laughs> I have to turn the thermostat up. It was too warm. Uh, okay. So what's happening now is the uh, the fan cycles on, and it purges out the heat. The 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 combustion chamber. So there's a, okay, so it can purges out the combustion chamber to prevent an explosion, right? Propane buildup for some reason. Then eventually the heat will click on, which I think it just did. Yeah, it did. Okay, it's gonna take a few minutes to warm up. So the light turned green, heat's on, and it is getting warmer in here. Um, I don't know what the BTU output of this is. I will find that out. Maybe before I post this video, I'll find it out. The BTU output's important. It not only tells you the heat, it tells you the uh, amount of fuel it consumes. Uh, you can calculate that. So, um, that's the basic crooks of it. I'll show you the outside also. The outside has a combustion exhaust port, so you don't have any fumes coming into the trailer. And it also has an air intake on the bottom for combustion. Okay, it's getting warm now. Takes a little while to heat up, but it uh, works pretty good. So I won't know how well this works until this winter. Uh, this winter, when it uh, when it's really cold out, I'll need to, I can see how the heat output is. So. Prior to this, I've been using uh, Mr. Heater which is a little cramped for two people and, uh, and Mr. Heater. He's an unwelcome third party. Yeah, now it's getting very well. So when you turn this off, when you turn this off, here's the thermostat. When you turn this off, it runs for a little while. It cools down the, uh, the, he the heater box just like it does on a home system. So this will run for a few minutes and then that will shut off. How well it works remains to be seen. I'm leaving this wonderful spot. Been here for three days. It's been great. Uh, really got windy last night. And uh, if you're worried about the wind, you can just hook your trailer to your car. Uh, that'll kind of anchor it. It wasn't that bad last night, but uh, just something to think about. It's trying to rain, and they really need the rain here very badly. Half of Canada's on fire, but, uh, well, I'm off. I've got to pay attention. The uh, Garmin uh, Nuvi GPS says I have to make a right turn in 342 miles. So the GPS has been really good. Uh, I prefer it over a phone. There's no cell coverage up here. I didn't download all the maps on my phone. Uh, this thing has just been great. It's a wonderful device. My biggest fear is that it'll stop working halfway through the trip. But uh, it's found all the coordinates I wanted it to find. It's been really good for navigation. It only made a few mistakes uh, up in Michigan where it was out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, that's okay with me. I'm pretty happy with it. I also brought a handheld GPS. Um, it can do road navigation, but it's really for being, uh, all, you know, for hiking, kayaking, bicycling. You know, it's a it's a banana sized little thing, you know, half a banana size, and it's uh, it's good. When I go for a hike in an unknown area, I take it just as a backup. I usually use a compass, but uh, it's just another measure of protection. You want wild, you go between uh, Nipigon, Ontario, and Marathon, Ontario. That's been the wildest stretch of this trip. And, uh, you know, I mean natural beauty, um, superb natural beauty, and uh, plenty of places. The boondock and camp without issue. 
uh, just get yourself the province uh, permit, $9 a day, and you are good to go and just explore as long as you want. I'd recommend a car with uh, a vehicle with at least eight inches of clearance. I have 8.7 inches. The more the better. If you have six inches, you better be careful. You better get out and measure things. We all know eight inches is more desirable than six inches, right? Ask anybody. So here's the giant goose of Wawa, Canada and Ontario. However, standing proudly on a huge piece of stone which actually is uh, fiberglass. this one a shot. I walk back quite a ways. Uh, it's too far to walk so there's a wide part I can drop the trailer. I'm gonna drop the trailer there and explore it by car. Okay here I am right off the road and there is Lake Superior. I hit pay dirt. Just a blind uh, road I just pulled out onto. Holy cow. here at this beautiful spot on Lake Superior and these wonderful people have agreed to share the spot with me. Hi. Your name is? Yanina. Yelena? Yanina. Yanina. Yes. Leonard. Leonard. Okay. And you are from? Uh, Germany. Hamburg. 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 Yes. You're hamburgers. We're hamburgers. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and uh, how long will you be in the U.S.? Uh, for three months. Well, we have been two weeks, so it's just a total of two and a half weeks now. And where have you been? Uh, Actually, just Michigan. We just started. Michigan, okay. Buy the van. You bought the van. Yes. So rather than rent, you bought. Yes. At the end of three months, you'll sell it? Yeah, that's our plan. Excellent. What year is the van? Um, 2000. 2000. So 18 years old. Uh -huh. And it's a camper van? Yes. Let's just look at it. How is it set up? You know, if it's okay with you? Yeah, yeah. So you have a four seater? Yes. Okay, very good. You built a bed? Okay, so it came without that. It was just a regular van before. It was, yeah, it was just a regular conversion van. And okay. Like a Storage below, water. Yes, exactly. Bathroom is out here? I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. And uh, where else do you plan to go? Um, the next step is Toronto, but we have to be in Toronto in like, or want to be in Toronto in like nine days. Oh, you have a lot of time to go to Toronto, yeah. huh? And you are just camping out. You're not going to campgrounds? No, we're not. Good, good. We call that boondocking here. Oh, boondocking. Boondocking, okay. How do you find your places? Just, Just luck? Driving around, looking at Google Maps, and maybe ask people. Yes. Good, like good. You? Yeah, well, you? you have internet access? Uh, no, just Wi Fi. Okay. There's something called um, freecampsites.net, uh -huh. okay. and it's pretty good. Uh, you can find a lot of free campsites. I found a number of them. But uh, it's very popular, so on weekends, places like this would be full. This was just okay. dumb luck. I looked uh -huh. at a couple of different places, uh -huh. and I went down every road here, and this is the only one that was open, so I did okay. okay. So very good. So you go to Toronto, then you have another couple of months. What are you doing? We're going to go to New York City. New York City? Okay, maybe we can help there. Yeah, yeah. that would okay. be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, afterwards, Washington, D.C., and then straight to Florida. Florida, okay. Okay, good, good. Yeah, Key West is fun. All the way across to California. 
driving? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be a That's long. a long drive. I did uh, 3,000 miles on this trip. Oh. I could have gone to California. Oh, well, yeah. I've been could. wasting a lot of time. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Okay, this is the view from outside the vestibule. Wonderful. This is like the world's greatest campsite. Superior is looking great. These are the biggest waves I've seen on Superior so far. Unbelievable. I'm not far from the highway, but who cares? Beautiful. Sunset on Lake Superior. Well, you know what? I don't know. Uh, shores of Lake Superior. What a great campsite. This is the morning view. Very good. Breakfast outdoors. Okay, we have yogurt and muesli. Muesli is like animal feed for humans. Mm -hmm. And green tea. Here's the border crossing at uh, Niagara Falls. 